Hello. So for the longest time now, I have been wanting to start a series on my channel called Taking Direction. Cringy name, but we move. And the gist of this series is I am going to be discovering the ins and outs of creative industries. I will be talking to slash interviewing people from presenting industry, acting industry, singing, dancing, music, even ones that have a little bit of a stigma around them I feel such as influencing and YouTube, even TikTok, all the social media stuff. But I also want to get you guys involved. Instead of me just writing down questions and asking them, I'm letting you guys ask things that you want to know about these particular industries such as how that person got to where they are in that industry advice for people that are trying to get into that industry and how they feel the industry has changed since they were starting out in that industry. I've said industry a lot but that's what this is all about. I've done a lot of advice Q&As and things like that but I wanted to create something that people would probably find a bit more useful because instead of me just sitting down and answering your questions and basing them off my opinion you can hear them from someone who actually knows a lot more about those industries than I do because I'm only young, I'm only just starting out and I want to find out more myself. If you guys like this first episode, then do let me know if you want me to do more and which industries you'd like to see. Make sure you give this a thumbs up, subscribe and turn your notifications on so you don't miss any videos. I post one every Sunday. And with that further ado, let's get into taking direction and meet who we will be speaking to today. Let's go. Today I am interviewing Mike Bushell, also known as my dad. I wanted to keep the first interview close to home to see if you guys first of all like this idea. And he is a television presenter, which is the industry that I am working to go into. So I wanted to start with this one as well. So in a nutshell, my dad for the past 30 years has been doing the sport on BBC Breakfast and he also does a piece which airs every Saturday where it's literally him trying a different sport. So without further ado, let's hear what my dad has to say about the presenting industry. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Bushell, I'm a sports presenter on BBC Breakfast. I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get into presenting, but I also like to do sports and keep active myself, so I'll be doing a few exercises like press-ups. Ah. 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 And also showing you how to play with your dog. Ah. You see, you can only get up to seven press-ups and Hunter likes to get involved too. Hello. Hello. How are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah, good to see you. I've got lots of questions that people have sent in about presenting, all kinds of stuff. Some stuff is about your career as a presenter, some of it's mm -hmm. just about presenting in general. Okay. We'll start off with about you. Okay. So how did you get into the presenting industry and how did you get work? What was the starting point? The starting point for me was newspapers. I'd always been um, interested in writing for magazines and newspapers. I did that at college. Mm. I worked on the college publication. I was the communications officer. Really? At my college. And when I was seven, I used to make a little paper for my friends called The Daily Owl, or just a typewriter and duplicator. But at that time, I didn't think I'd go into journalism. But I remember um, having a love of telling people about things. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Um, I love telling people news or new exciting things. And so I did a drama degree, just in the theatre and TV. Um, and then afterwards, I got a job on the local newspaper in Winchester. And that trained me in journalism, and I loved that. And then I worked for a few other newspapers, and eventually through that got a job on Radio Solon, BBC Local Radio, which was always a great avenue of radio. Mm -hmm. But they took me on because I worked on newspapers. So, so it's very important that the writing and the journalism was essential to me getting into presenting. Um, so that is a great way. Mm -hmm. um, go and work for your local newspaper, it's a great way of getting experience. Mm -hmm. Work for nothing for a time like I did, and then there's obviously community radio, hospital radio, local radios, stations all over now um, that are really give you great experience yeah. and get you used to presenting. And then through working on Radio Solent, you started eventually doing a bit of TV reporting on the Isle of Wight. And it all then builds and builds. You build up your confidence, your communication skills, your presenting skills on Radio First, and then got into TV. Nowadays, I suppose there's so many more opportunities with YouTube, 
and people social doing their own media. vlogs, social media, yeah. yeah so a- anybody can do a bit of presenting now, mm. and, and it's great experience. And if you want to do commentating, you can commentate on anything, mm. whether it's um, pets playing in the garden, or just watch a match on TV and, and just practice commentating. So would you say the journalism side is definitely good knowledge to have before you start out? Yes, journalism is a great way of getting um, the communication skills built up, yeah. the writing, but also if you're doing um, broadcast journalism, yeah. it's all about telling the story to your friends in the park or the pub or when the restaurant. Yeah. It's as if you're telling somebody on the phone mm. um, and it gives you that great experience of how to tell a story, how to get people excited by the story, how to make it informative, how to make it concise, but also interesting. And you always have to try and do it in your own style, your own manner, mm. your own voice, your own way of speaking. We have a dog. Yes, um, we have a dog. We have a dog. That doesn't help you get, in, get into presenting. <laughs> Animals are always good for the soul, aren't they? So <laughs> here we are, we have a dog on, on, uh, <laughs> on set. <laughs> Is it hard to grow in the presenting industry? Because it's obviously very competitive and it can be hard to know where to start. Yes, so it, it is hard to grow in the, the presenting industry. A, a, there's a lot of luck involved, it's very subjective, so mm. one Especially editor, now. one boss might like one person's face, they might be looking for a certain style of presenter, certain yeah. accent, certain look, certain size, certain ethnicity, uh, certain sex. And the show as well. And the show, you've got to fit yeah. the show. Um, but on that I'd say you just have to be yourself, let your own personality come out and find somewhere that it suits. Yeah. So presenting your own voice and your own style. Um, Smile, be, be happy, be positive, um, take knockbacks because you'll get them, but don't get offended by them, don't get hurt by them, yeah. uh, have a thick skin, just be confident, but keep believing in your own abilities, your own style, and listen to others, take advice. Mm. Um, so That's if you do scary. get rejection, take advice, how can I improve, what can I do differently, and what would you, and, and take that advice and, and apply it, and listen to what others say, and do it, and I think just have confidence and believe that your turn will come. Yeah. Keep practicing, keep doing it, keep pushing, knocking on doors, asking to have a go to do a screen test just to get the confidence up. Do YouTubing, do a um, channel publishing self publishing because yeah. it gives you practice. Just make little videos yourself because it's mm. great, great experience. Join any local presenting course or radio station or anything that will give you that experience. Yeah, I guess radio is a great place to start because. A lot of local radio stations, they always like volunteers. Yes. So that's a great place to, to local, be in. Yeah, local radio stations, uh, whether it's community hospital radio stations or even mm. BBC local radio stations, they're fantastic places to start because yeah. they're looking for volunteers. You, you get to see the equipment, you get to um, do a lot more, you get a lot more responsibility at, yeah. at that level. So it's a great way of learning, whether it's the editing or the presenting mm. or the reporting. You'll see others at work. They really do need help and um, they, they appreciate having people around Definitely. and it's a fantastic place to start and it's a great standard as well like in a lot of places and they do some really good work for the community also. Yeah, Journalism is about connecting with the community, finding the stories, finding yeah. those scoops, those leads and the only way you can do that is by going out to the local community and talking to people Yeah. and, and going on the internet and joining local groups, community groups and, and hearing people's stories and getting mm. people then to come to you with ideas and, mm. and generate. So it's gossip, isn't it? It's, it's listening to, to people, finding out their stories, and then trying to help them with their journalism. Yeah. is a great tool for helping people. Definitely. Um, but yes, I think the local papers, local radio stations, they're a great place to start because a lot of papers now have broadcasting as part of their internet service as well. Mm. So that's giving people a really good opportunity to, yeah. to do some broadcasting. Good to while. build your portfolio. As yeah, well. build your portfolio with so many different things. Take yeah. risks. Um, get out there by yourself a little do some recordings on your phone even, it's just yeah. it's a case of getting experience, talking, go and make a programme about a local walk or something, a local yeah. landmark, just go and do it on your phone. <laughs> and just practice and then you can get editing software on your phone or on your yeah. PC and you can practice, practice, practice. Yeah. A lot of things you don't even have to pay for, you get a lot of, no, a lot of free, free apps, yeah. free software apps. Yeah, and you can just make little films, just keep yeah. doing it, because it's the love of it, it's passion that will keep you going Yeah. through those initial years. And doing it without feeling the need to get paid at first. Yeah, exactly. You have to do a lot like of people voluntary. do it without getting paid oh, yeah. at first because yeah. it's yeah, it's not it's not necessarily the best paid industry, but it's no. you do it for the love of it, really. Exactly. Because if you don't love it you won't get very far yeah. because it's it, it takes your life over a lot of the time. It's yeah. It's all Challenge. consuming, it's time consuming, but it's great fun. Yeah. You'll never get bored. No. <laughs> never a dull moment. I find this next question really interesting because 
Some massive presenters didn't go down this route, mm -hmm. but some have. And I've just finished a degree in TV and broadcasting, and someone asked if qualifications are necessary. And by that, I guess they mean like a university degree or a postgrad mm -hmm. degree. Um, so yeah, well, that's what we want to know: is would you recommend them? I think I would recommend a qualification if you can. Some people are lucky enough to go straight into the industry as a yeah, presenter. Some people come from acting; mm. they become a, a little bit a comedian. They've been a a comedian doing stand-up comedy or they've been acting at school or college and been very successful with that and they might come in through acting. Um, but there's no set way, but for me I didn't have those avenues, so I went through the getting a qualification. Yes. And a qualification is good, especially if it's in the communication subjects like drama mm. or English or broadcast of course as well, journalism, um, because they give you the communication skills. So drama is a really good one to do. I would recommend a qualification, but it's not the be all and end all. No, it's not the it's, only route. No, people come from all sorts of, of walks of life into presenting. Yeah. Um, they might have come up with an idea for Watchdog, a yeah. consumer idea, and they might just have it naturally. Mm. I found myself, I needed something to build on, so mm. I did get a qualification. And it, because it was in drama, it helped. Yeah. Because it was communication skills. Um, yeah. And going to university, I found anyway, that it gave me a lot of experience. Yes, I think a university degree is a really good idea, not just because of the course and the qualification it gives you, but it's all the other things you can do, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like joining societies that can yes. give you more experience. So. Yeah, joining societies, absolutely. Yeah. It's what you do at university or college, which is almost just as important as the qualification. Yeah. Join the TV station if there is one, the local radio yeah. station, and try and go to a university that has those mm. facilities, that has a TV studio and does a local channel for the students, yeah. or has a local... A college or a university newspaper or magazine and, and a, or a, a university radio station and get involved in those that will give you so Definitely. much experience so university will help in that sense and also it helps just broaden you you grow older and you mm. get so many more life experiences don't you and and that really helps as well someone asked do you feel as if you're famous do i feel as if i'm famous no i don't really the word famous is a strange one isn't it? yes i don't like the word famous i don't really like the word celebrity um, you're just a, a normal person who happens to be in people's living rooms on the TV. <laughs> and so I like it when people come up and say hello and um, you know, even ask for a selfie or whatever they want just because it means they, they watch and that's quite nice. But I don't feel famous because I want to know about them just as much as they're asking Especially about me. Especially presenting because I guess it's about you. Yes. So like they're watching you so like when they meet you in person yes, it's expected to be the same. Yeah, and it's important to be the same, so, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so I don't know Not to be like different on TV. I, I think in broadcasting you just be yourself. And so if people meet you and say hello, then you're just yourself. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And usually people are nice. So, <laughs> no, I don't feel famous. Um, that must be strange. I think if you're on a sort of David Beckham level or Victoria Beckham level, yeah. that, that might be for their fame. But I can lead a normal life. Yeah. I can go to the supermarket, I can go to the pub, I can go to a restaurant and people might say hello, but it's not it's not intrusive, so I don't think it's... There's no one outside the house. No one outside the house waiting to take pictures when I take the the hound out, the dog out, so I'm patting a dog here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't really feel famous, no, but it's it's nice to be known and seen mm. by people in their living rooms watching on TV. Yeah. So that's nice, but I don't feel famous. <laughs> um, this is really interesting because I've been thinking this, like, how do you feel like the presenting industry has changed since you were starting out? Because we have so many more things now, that mm. more channels yes. and social media, so I feel like it maybe has changed, but how do you feel it's changed? Yeah, I think the whole presenting industry has changed completely since I joined. Um, when I joined, it was much more narrow. Mm. There were just the four channels. There was a much more set way, traditional way in. You go through newspapers, you then do try and get into local radio and in, in, mm. into TV. Um, now, there are so many ways for people to self-broadcast. Yeah. YouTube, YouTube has overtaken TV, really, in terms of a platform, um, and radio, indeed. And there's so many more radio channels, community radio channels, uh, community town TV channels, YouTube, people do their own vlogs. Yeah. And they can make it so from their bedrooms. And, yeah. and that's, that's fantastic. It gives people so many more opportunities. Mm -hmm. But then I suppose there are more people out there trying to do it, but there are more channels. So I think yeah. the opportunities are greater than ever before. Yeah. There's also a lot more corporate videos. People want corporate voices. There's voiceover companies. There's so many careers in, the, in it now, whether it's voiceover, um, corporate videos, uh, doing all sorts. Um, people, even estate agents now, want yeah. broadcasters to show people around their homes virtually by a video and put mm. a voice on it. So there are so many more opportunities now, which has really changed. And there's so many different ways to get started. You don't yeah. necessarily 
need to go down that traditional route anymore of degree, working for a local newspaper. I think it still helps because it gives you a good grounding, but it's, it's, it, there's so many more ways in now. Yeah, definitely. Um, so basically it's more competitive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because there's more opportunities. Yes, yeah, it's more competitive now. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not a bad thing because there are more opportunities and more routes. channels out there and more yeah. routes in. Um, yeah, the, the old set ways are, have gone completely. They're still there, but it's it's more. There's much more opportunity for all. Yeah, definitely. When you're just starting out, what kind of makes you think, oh, this is the genre I fit into? Because sometimes you'll see a presenter like, oh, they mainly fit this genre, but then. There are some presenters that I've done all, all shows. Yes. So I thought this was an interesting one. Yes, that's a really good question. Yeah. I think there is. Uh, we probably are suited to some genres rather than others, and you just have to find your way and find what suits as you go along. Mm. So, for example, I probably found that I wasn't suited to the investigative journalism. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't hard enough or like the news. grilling people. I did some news, local news, you but did, yeah. um, I wouldn't have gone undercover to work for, yeah. for Watchdog or things like that. I, I found I was more into, I suppose, sports, lifestyle, yeah. um, engaging with people in that way. And while I did the news for a while, I then really found myself, I did a history programme about South, uh, the 2,000 years of the, of the South of England, which I loved. I loved doing the sort of feature lifestyle pieces yeah. on history. Yeah. And then sport, I'd have done, sport. I'd have loved, I found that I was really interested in the environment, history, but also sport, mm. because I love sport and there's a passion for it. Um, and while I like news and I followed the news, I think there were some much harder hitting journalists mm -hmm. who were prepared to go into undercover and chase criminals down with a camera and ask them difficult questions. Um, maybe it was a confidence thing, but I, I necessarily knew that wasn't my strong point. Yeah. And so I found that going into sport, being engaging, trying to inspire people into sport by trying it myself and putting myself in as the guinea pig, if you like, it was a great way of engaging people because I'm not actually an athlete. So I st and maybe I was different then to normal, quite a lot of sports presenters and reporters yeah. that are actual former athletes who can do the sports. I was always, well, I wasn't very good at sport at school, but that shouldn't stop us. That was mm. my sort of genre I found eventually to try and inspire other non-sporty types to get more active and more healthy through sport. Yeah. So I think you do find your way. It takes time. Mm. But at the first, leave a, have a broad canvas and just a broad open mind and see mm. which you're best suited to do. And I guess like. it depends on your personality mm. and what you're passionate about yeah, as well. Yeah, it does. Because if you present about something you're passionate about, then it's... Yeah, that makes a huge difference. Yeah. yeah, do something you're passionate about and that suits your personality. You've mm. got to be passionate about the subject you're presenting. Mm. Yes, I, I wouldn't do fashion. I don't know about it. <laughs> or hair. <laughs> well, you've got very good hair, isn't it? <laughs> but I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be very strong on a, a fashion programme. <laughs> but yeah. we've always, always also got to have strings to our bow, different strings to our bow. Yeah. So it's good to keep an open mind and, and keep a, uh, across a, a range of subjects and be interested in them. But true passion, yeah, you do need the true passion about yeah. a subject to really succeed. Yeah. How do you build your confidence as a presenter? Because you say that you were quite shy back yeah. in the day. Yes, I, I was a very nervous presenter initially and, and quite shy. I built my confidence up by just Repetition, repetition, repetition. Yeah, I'm making mistakes. Yeah. Going back, I used to listen to every broadcast, almost at times torture myself with it. <laughs> any of any mistake, and analyse why I made that mistake. Yeah. Um, and then found my own ways of building confidence, like breaking things down on the autocue with little commas, to space it out a bit more. Practice, practice, practice as well. So just practice, keep reading, yeah. keep writing it in your own words, rather than reading someone else's writing out. That also helped with presenting to make yeah. it more conversational. To not get too het up about every word, but make it more of a conversation, yeah. that helped. So you almost learn a subject and I'd live around it rather than just reading, reading, reading off the autocue. And that helped build up the confidence as well. Mm -hmm. Just practice, that practice did. in the mirror. Do you still get nervous? Sometimes on outside broadcasts I get nervous. Mm -hmm. um, because you haven't got a script and necessarily an autocue and you've got to try and keep the time. Um, but as long as you're across the subject and as long as you've researched, mm -hmm. it's enough then you can get yourself out of any problems yeah, and you can feel, you're prepared. You feel and chat about it and yeah. sound like natural. So preparation is key, analysing your, your own work is key initially just to build up your confidence and yeah, just practice, 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 it, yeah. it will come, the confidence. And relax, yeah. that's the key thing, relax and enjoy, relax yeah, and enjoy it. Definitely. If you're and doing sports especially. Yeah, because obviously if you're nervous it can come across so yes, especially it, if you're reading off an autocue and you're stressed about 
the words. And That's very true. Yeah. Yes, if you're nervous and tense, then that will come across on the autocue and that will mean you're mm. probably more likely to sound rigid and make the viewer stressed and tense. And also it means you're probably more likely to make mistakes. Yeah. Because you'll trip over a word or you'll get flustered. Yeah, so the advice of reading off the autocue especially, I guess, for you, from you is practice it, but also if you need to change your words slightly, yes, you can. Yes, yes. With the autocue, use it as a guide, but you can mm. talk around it as long as you know the subject and mm. the story. Look at the story. Don't, don't, just, to don't just go blind with it. Yeah. It's like playing the piano, don't just sight read blind. Yeah. Blind. Because Fit it to you, yeah. change the words, practice it, practice it, mm. and de deviate, put it into your own conversational style. Just imagine you. that you're telling a friend yeah. in the park, bumped into them at the bus stop and you're telling them the story you're about to tell them, but you wouldn't have it written down, you wouldn't be reading yeah. off an audio, would you? Because it's difficult, telling... especially when it's like, a, if there's words that you don't know yeah. how to pronounce, or if it's about a subject that mm. you don't know That's about. a good point, I mean, the words, there's some really difficult words, but I always spell it phonetically, mm. so spell it as it sounds. Spell it as it sounds. Yeah, that's yeah. my advice. But then other people like to do it differently, if yeah. it's a difficult name. But yeah, always, um, and break words up. Mm. I always find it hard to say, phenomenon. So I just break it up with the <laughs> hyphens. Phenomenon. Phenomenon. This is something you might know a little bit about because there's something you're quite well known well oh, yes. known for is how to handle mistakes on air. Oh yes, how to handle mistakes on air. Of how course. not to fall in a pool. Yes, my biggest um, mistake on air was falling into a swimming pool at the Commonwealth Games in Australia and the key thing was how you handle it. And so, so yeah. I've always been told that just to... I think you handled it. Well, you sort of own up. Mm. It's happened. Pretend like it doesn't happen. Not, well, not pretend like it doesn't happen. No. Um, don't get flustered. Again, smile and appear relaxed. Say, so, oh, sorry about that. That, that wasn't yeah. meant to happen. I guess laugh it off because it's like, yeah. it's happened. Can't yeah, but still. really help that. No, exactly. You apologise. Oh, sorry about that. Didn't really happen, did it? Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> take the deal with you. And, and so, and then I, I think I said, well, there's that, people around here laughing, but let's carry on. Yeah, let's carry on. And then I think apologise and carry on. and. Just, just don't let it worry you, yeah. because that's the key thing with a mistake. Don't let it become a domino effect and yeah. cause you to get really flustered. Um, people actually on TV, they pretty much, much like unintentional mistakes. It also help that serious or have consequences. It's yeah. TV, live TV goes wrong, things yeah. happen. Um, and no it's technical. This, this is what someone said to me once um, when I was doing a radio show. They said, think about it this way, no one dies. Exactly, like, no one dies. It didn't hurt anyone when you fell no, in the pool. No, it didn't hurt anybody when I fell in the pool. In the end, it gave people some, some good laughter. <laughs> that wasn't the intention, obviously, but yeah, no one dies when you make mm. a mistake on TV. Appear relaxed, just, just don't yeah. worry about it. Don't worry you, apologise. Mm. Say, oh, that wasn't meant to happen. Yeah. But just carry on. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't laugh and, and as if it's a ridiculous thing. and it, that can seem false. Um, and you can smile about it and help, yeah. But just carry on. <laughs> Try not to corpse. <laughs> Where you just end up laughing and you can't continue. The best bit about that clip is that you were like, I've got to be careful. Cause I've oh got yes, I was concentrating on the sound, the sound packer and the microphone. <laughs> but the one thing I didn't do was study the, the contours of the pool. I didn't see there was a deep bit because it was a last minute change of location and I was focusing so much on yeah. the athletes' names and everything like that that I forgot I didn't really look at the pool. That's so it was a children's pool. Mistakes can happen, especially if everything's going quite quickly mm. and you're doing something that you're not used to like in a location. Yeah, oh, mistakes happen all the time mm. in TV. It can be autocubes, freezing, or it could be technical problems, or you could just m m accidentally say something wrong and it sounds funny. Yeah. How do you handle the competitive side of the industry? Because it is one of the most competitive industry, especially now because there's just so many Yes. Huge, huge presenters. And yes, it, it's a very competitive industry, but I've never really been a very competitive person. No. Um, I guess don't compare I, yourself. I never compare myself. No, just don't think about what other people are doing. Don't mm. think about if they are getting that opportunity. Just focus yeah. on yourself and try to improve your own style, your own presenting skills. Don't let it get you stressed. Don't get jealous. Don't get het up. Um, because TV is about teamwork as well. You can't have egos in there, really. Because egos then clash and cause don't tension. Like egos, no, people don't, don't like egos. Don't so I've like never it? been a competitive person. I was always uh, under the impression that if it was going to happen for me, it would happen. Yeah. Uh, and just carry on doing what I was doing, the slow build up. Yeah. It took me a long time, decades, to get to what I'm doing now. Would you say making a show reel is important? Because I really worked on doing that kind of thing in lockdown. Mm. And it's harder than people think. It's not just putting clips together, I feel. It's like you have to show you. Mm. It's, it is harder. It is. I, I, I used to. Yeah. 
I used to really struggle with showreels. Showreels are really hard to do. I used to make them too long, think, oh, I've got to leave that in, yeah. leave that in. Because you kind of want to put everything in, but then some bits. Yes. But then <laughs> producers often, they only want to see like a few seconds. And it's, yeah, exactly. People was told me that actually the bosses or whoever's watching your showreel decides in the first 30 yeah. seconds. Which is scary because. Or 10 seconds. Yeah. Um, they just want to see you doing what you do naturally. And it doesn't have to be gimmicky. Mm. It doesn't have to be your best piece of reporting. It can it just something that shows your skills off and mm. your personality off. Mm. And also that you're you look that, like someone they can work with. Yeah. Straight um, to the point, I guess. Straight to the point. Like, keep it under two I, minutes. That's what I do. Yeah, keep it under two minutes. Yeah. Um I used to yeah, spend a lot of time with editors editing in proper show reels. Mm. But they didn't seem to, to, to get me anywhere. I did, just yeah, just make it simple, uh, to the point. Mm. Show yourself off. Show your skills. It's a bit like a CV. It's a bit like a CV, yeah. Get a nice range in there. Put a nice range in there um, mm. to show you've got experience. But, but yeah, they're more Make important it... now, I guess, because a lot of producers they don't have time to meet you. They just want to see yes. ten seconds. Show reels probably are more important than ever before, and that's why they've got to be straight to the point. Do it all within two minutes maximum. Um, make the first thirty seconds very important. Just show yeah, off yourself naturally. They're more important now because. Producers and bosses don't have a lot of time to watch no. all the channels or the TV, so they might no. not have seen you before. And there's so many people doing their own content out there that we, we, you wouldn't know necessarily what they can do until you see a showreel. Mm. And also, the producers don't have time necessarily to have sit down interviews, they just want to see someone immediately on yeah. a file, they can click on their computer. Yeah. In the old days, putting a tape in the machine are gone, aren't they? They just want to see your file. Exactly. Click it, open it, watch it. 30 seconds a minute later, yeah. they'll be moving on. So the first 10 seconds. The first 10 seconds are crucial, yeah. yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know if many people have to audition necessarily for a show now, but do you have any advice on the audition process? Because you had quite a few. Yeah, they, well at the BBC, it might be different to others, but mm. you had boards, and yeah. you still have boards, um, where three people would interview, one would play the bad cop, one would play the good cop. The bad cop being someone that would ask you more difficult questions and try and Mm. Test you really, yeah. so you need that, and then you'd have the, the good cop would be much more, more nice asking you about yourself. Yeah. And, um, auditions really just again be yourself, do your homework, watch the news before if you're waiting for a journalism job. Study, um, I guess, the show. Study the show, yes. Yeah. Have something to say about how you might change it in a positive way, yeah. ideas for the show. Do they ask you many questions before you do a piece to camera? No, they, they wouldn't really, the, the piece to camera would be separate to the board, that's a good point. Mm. So you'd have the interview, you'd have the audition, but then the piece to camera in the studio, the, the um, screen test would be separate. Mm. And you wouldn't be asked questions about that, that would literally be just how you come across. Mm. So there's two parts to an interview really, and, and, and to the boarding process for a job. As presenter, there's the sit down chat, yeah. which is about you. That's just a case of being yourself, do some research about the program you're going for, and read the news, be aware of the current affairs and some things yeah. around you. Um, but also have some some good ideas about the show, some input, and then the screen test would be different. So the screen test would just be about how you appear mm -hmm. to make sure you know you're wearing something that fits and looks yeah. good. And, hair and makeup and stuff, but then they usually provide that for a screen test. And just be natural with the autocue, just take your time, deep breaths. Take your time. Smile. Yeah. Because you, the smile always needs to be big be on yourself, TV. I just be yourself, yeah, that's yeah. the crucial thing. And if they don't like who you are, so I guess someone else will. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and keep believing it, it might yeah. not fit. You or them. Yeah, or the show. Or the show, Depends yeah. Depends on the show as well. Yeah. Yeah, because I've only done auditions at uni and they were just more, they were more casual because they yeah. were student shows, but even then they were nerve wracking. Yeah, they get, they get nerve wracking. The more you do as well, the more you do of, um, Yeah, I guess you get used auditions. to Auditions. Yeah. The more hectic, yeah. But deep breath, smile. Um, yeah, and just be, enjoy the day, enjoy the moment and, yeah. and be friendly, and, which I see a lot of people that you can be naturally, but yeah, just. They, they need to think that they can be someone that they enjoy working with. What has been the biggest challenge in your career? This is an interesting one. The biggest challenge in my career has to overcome the fear. That's mm. overcome mm. the nerves. The nerves. And for you especially, I think one of the challenges for you is you do very long hours early morning. Yes. The A other challenge is overcoming lack of sleep because mm. I'm not a natural sleeper. I don't find it easy just to drop off yeah. and wake up five, six hours later. So. For an early shift, you can be tossing and turning, thinking about the bulletin already. Mm. It can be hard to switch off. And then the biggest challenge then is, is being awake and alert yeah. on that shift to be a good presenter. Yeah. So then the challenge is getting over the sleep. Yeah. And initially, as I say, building up the confidence and getting to a place where you feel natural yeah. with it. Yeah. Because being natural is quite hard. Mm. 
because it's when you tense up and get nervous about something, it's it's, it, yeah. it, it's hard to be yourself and natural. Yeah. And you you do a lot of um, travelling. Doing, doing a lot of travelling as well. A lot of driving. The travelling is a big challenge. The early mornings are a big challenge, um, but you do it because you love it. Yeah. Yeah, and being able to balance the work and the rest, like yeah. the time you get at home. Well, that's the other big challenge. The mm. other big challenge is balancing family time with mm. being on the road and doing so many hours and mm. working, working away and, well. and broadcasting. You're often going to be doing long hours overnight mm. or working away because mm. you can lose that. You can just work, work, work and lose that. So yeah. in this industry especially, it's very important. Yeah, making sure you get enough, yeah, that's a big enough challenge. rest. And yeah. Rest at home with, with your dog. Yeah, with the dog. With the dog. <laughs> dog walking time. Dog walking time. And how did you feel about being asked to do Strictly, which was a very big thing in your career, yes. especially because that, that was last year. Oh, yes, when I got the call about Strictly, I thought they must be meaning someone else. I thought they possibly can't want me. Oh. No. But actually, when I got the call, I was so excited. It's not something you turn down, it's mm. the, one of the biggest TV shows. Mm. of the day and it was the biggest show yeah that you'd ever been on biggest show I'd ever been done completely you know completely a different audience a much younger audience a lot more wide range of people watch it um, I, I was very excited when I was asked but I was also very nervous you with me I was with you at the and time. I was thinking oh my goodness this You're is gonna like, happen oh in a couple God. of months <laughs> and you already then start thinking about it what's gonna be like it seems so nerve-wracking mm. the fact that you're gonna be learning dances with strangers and then with an individual partner and then every week be trying to do it in front of millions on TV in a live studio mm. and you're thinking all the things that could go wrong but it's trying to be positive and think about the greatness yeah. of the experience. Time you'll, you'll never forget. Time will never forget, no. Dog, dog dancing next. Dog dancing, that should be a thing. It should. That should be a thing. It, it is? Yeah. yeah. Dog dancing. Dog dancing. Yeah, that's all the questions. Thank oh, you for... Thank you, darling. Yeah, I think we covered everything. Yeah. Good job, it's the end of the bulletin. I'm going to get some water. I'll see you refreshed at quarter past 11. <laughs>